Hey, what's up everyone? I'm DJ Alex Brown and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm excited to share with you some more Google hacks. In a past video, I've talked about how you can hack Gmail to uh, have a basically domain-based email along with Google domains. Uh, without having to actually pay Gmail for having that custom email. If you were to pay Gmail, you'd be using what's called uh, Google Workspace or G Suite. It's gone by a couple different names over the years, but it's really pretty much all the same thing. Now in today's video, I'll be talking about some of the nuances of Google Workspace and my experience with the apps that come along with it and a quick little tip that I learned that Google Workspace's sales and support will not tell you about. So stick around, we have a lot to unpack in this video. It's gonna be sort of a review, sort of a comparison, and sort of a tips, tricks, hack video, a tutorial video, so. Before I get started with uh, kind of unpacking everything in this video here, we are taking a look at pricing. There is three price tiers that actually have prices in this an enterprise tier which is something you usually expect from a service like this so six dollars twelve dollars and eighteen dollars a month respectively and there is a 14 day free trial i'm also going to leave a link in the description and a couple of offer codes for you guys if you sign up with the link it will help to support the channel and if you use the offer codes you'll get 10 percent off your first year um, so when I was actually considering upgrading from my email hack that I published about a year ago um, to actually having a legitimate domain-based email, I was considering two companies, uh, technically three if you want to get technical, um, Apple, Microsoft, and Google. Um, they all offer a professional-looking email to some extent, but Apple's is, basically works the same way that I had hacked my Gmail, uh, in that video that I was mentioning uh, from last year. And so that basically didn't work for what I was trying to do. I know that uh, Microsoft is pretty much the go-to for businesses. Um, honestly, after using Google Workspace for about six months, I really can't see why anyone would use anything other than Google Workspace. But this is really a long story of saying when I was reaching out to uh, support for a couple different companies, I had some questions. My key question was, I was already using email forwarding. I had old emails from, in the case of its lit, a previous owner, so melanie at itslitri.com, which I didn't need to be active anymore. I just needed those emails to forward into another mailbox so that somebody gets those emails if say they're reaching out to try and book with us again. Gmail support will tell you that you need to pay for an extra email for each of these, and then you can forward that email through that extra Gmail inbox into a different inbox. But if you're looking to do what I was doing, you don't need to do that. And I find it quite ironic that uh, Gmail and Microsoft both say that you need to do that when it's probably losing them sales. Um, what you should do is use a catch all account. Um, and it's not necessarily a separate account. So in my case, um, let's use my example of alex at djalexbrown.com. That is my DJ business email address. Now, uh, way back in the day, I used to have an info at djalexbrown.com email address. Let's say I still wanted to keep that active along with any other non-alex at djalexbrown.com email addresses. Instead of having all those addresses as individual accounts, I can have just my one account that I actually use, actually need an inbox for, actually need storage for, and work off of that one, and then set it up as a catch-all inbox. There's actually additional features you can add on to this, like filtering and rules that will help to make this work even better. <clears throat> and there's great information on Google's website about this feature. We'll take a quick dive into it right now. I'm not gonna do a full tutorial on how to set it up, but I will provide in the description some links on how to do this. But here's a quick look at what this looks like. Basically, you are setting up a rule in your Google Workspace Gmail account that will catch any emails that are sent to a email address uh, that is not registered on the domain, if that makes sense. It's set up as a rule and not a separate account. You don't have to pay an extra couple of dollars a month for an account that just basically forwards emails to another inbox. And you can set this up so that uh, the emails are forwarded to a specific inbox. In my case, I can take the uh, all emails besides uh, the ones that are going to 
specific emails that are already set up and I can send them to alex at djalexbrown.com. Now moving forward and talking a little bit more about Google Workspace, let's talk for a minute about why I chose Google Workspace over Microsoft. Now I have actually used Microsoft's Outlook email or Exchange email for business in the past um, when they offered just the email as a standalone because it was a little bit cheaper than going with Google, which only offered a package of all their apps. Nowadays, the offerings are basically the same between the two companies and pricing is basically the same. It's really a matter of what works best for you. Unfortunately, at the lower tiers, you don't really get any support, um, which can be troubling, um, especially if you're trying to set this up for the first time. I do wish that they made it a little bit easier to get support for the basic level accounts that are about $5 a month um, for when you're trying to get this set up because this is not something that you can necessarily just click a button and it's all set up for you. You do have to have a little bit of tech knowledge and that really goes for any sort of professional email like this. Now, one of the reasons that I chose to go with Google is because I actually use Google Docs to share all of my wedding planning documents with my couples so that we can all collaborate on a single document. And to me, it just made the most sense to um, have a separate Google Docs that I could use and communicate with all the couples and also keep my email within that account. Also, storage is obviously included, so I now have separate business 30 gigabytes of storage, which is plenty for what I do, um, you know, basic file sharing and emails. I'm probably only using five gigabytes of that. Now, of course, with that, you get access to all of the Google apps that are included in Workspace at that lower tier subscription. I'm not gonna go into every single one, but I think most people will be happy with just the basics of slides, sheets, and docs. One of the really nice things about Google is that it is actually cross compatible. So one of the things that I really like and was a deciding factor for me is that I can use a Microsoft Excel document, upload it into my Google Drive, open it through Docs editing or Excel editing in Google Sheets or Google Docs and edit a Microsoft file in Google. Now this is a really cool thing. You can do it with a personal Google account so it's not exclusive to Workspace. But if you deal with people in the line of your work that say they send you Microsoft Word documents or something and you still need to edit those, well, good news, you can edit them natively in Google Docs. Um, but it's very easy to do. Now, in addition to using Microsoft email in the past, I did also use Microsoft Word Excel PowerPoint uh, through my college years as that's of course how all of the college professors wanted you to do things. In my case, I have a degree in business, so most of the business world is using the Microsoft Office products. However, it is my personal belief that they are not the best product available. And I'm all about having the best product available to run your business. And by far, in my opinion, that is Google Workspace for business. That's why I use it for my own business. Um, Google is also constantly adding additional features to their subscriptions. So um, they have some low code ways to develop apps. Uh, Google Tables is a recently introduced. Um, it's kind of still in a beta. Um, it's something that I've been toying around with a little bit and I'm very interested to see how this works. It's kind of like a database. It's kind of like a cross between a database and an Excel spreadsheet or a, a Sheets spreadsheet, I guess. But anyway, I don't wanna make this video too long, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. Um, if you'd like to see me do future videos about this, please leave me a note in the comments, leave a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to my channel. Um, I'd be happy to go into more depth about my experience with Google Workspace if you guys would like me to. Do also make sure that if you want to sign up for a trial or to sign up to just use Workspace, make sure you use the link or in the description or on the screen here. Um, that would really be helpful because if you do use that link, it will help to support the channel. So I'd really appreciate it if you use that. Otherwise, that wraps things up. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Until next time, peace.